Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. In my last video, I showed you how I add details to a number of different locomotives for use here on the Piedmont Southern. Some of those were highly detailed for magazine articles, others were just standard running models that I use here on the railroad. And as I promised in that video, today I want to show you how you can take a basic model like this Walther's F7 and add just a handful of details to make it pop and look more like the prototype. So let's go ahead and get that done. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Now what I've already done is I've already drilled a bunch of holes here on the roof and this is pretty easy because Walther's provides you with little dimples here and here, 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 and four located here. And these are for lift rings. And as you can see here, I've already added uh, a number of these to get started because, you know, once you do one, you've done them all. So I've already added the four lift rings back here. And these are used when they want to pull a, uh, the steam generator out or pull out the fans when they're doing major overhauls. And up here, this is the dynamic brake fan, and they have a pair of lift rings there as well. Now for those, I use these Detail Associates number 2206 eye bolts. So they are the perfect match for this, and they're very easy. You just take a number 76 uh, pin vise drill bit, like this one right here, and you can put it right into that dimple, and give it a few twists like this, and that's all there is to it. And these are something that last a lifetime, and you'll need to buy a set of, or a few anyway, of these drill bits for it. So this is a number 76 drill bit. You'll probably need something like a number 53 or a 58. Uh, I believe, let's see, this one here calls for a 58. These two both here call for a number 75. So you could probably use a 75 for most of these details, including the lift rings. Then you would need a number 58 drill bit uh, for the speedometer. So, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. And you can pick up these individually at your hobby shop, or you can order them from companies like Micromark. They sell these little pin vise drills for use and the little bits as well. So you can order those from, like I said, Walther's, Micromark. You probably can find them at your local dealer. Hobby Town probably has them. And then if you want, you can order a drill index set like this. And this covers 61 through 80 uh, bit sizes. And so it's just like a regular drill bit assortment. You probably won't use most of these. So what you want to do is look up the parts that you're going to be using and find out what size drill bit they recommend that you use. And then just order a few of those. And that'll do it for you because most of those drill bits in that assortment I've never even touched. There's about a half dozen bits that I use on a regular basis for most of these details. Let's go ahead and uh, I want to finish off on the lift rings here because there's two more lift rings that need to go in. So I've got a little bit of super glue here and this is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is once you've drilled your hole and have a nice steady hand, get the eye bolt and dip it into the super glue. And I'm using my Loctite gel super glue and get a little bit on here. Don't get a lot. It doesn't take much. Just pop it into the hole there, and that's all there is to it. Okay, so I've got one more here, and I'm going to get a little bit of glue on it again, and we'll pop it into place here, like that. And these things, they wobbled around, ended up all over the place in all different directions, so you really don't have to worry about which way they're facing. So now I've got four here, I've got four here on the exhaust fans, I've got two up here on the dynamic brake setup. The next thing, since we're on the roof, I want to show you about replacing the uh, horns here with my Nathan M5 and my firecracker antenna. 
So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to remove these. Now what I've done, I've taken my plastic, plastic weld and I've applied it to the inside here in order to get these things firmly in place. Now they're in there pretty darn tight. I don't think they're going to come out. And what I'm going to do is, now that I've got them firmly attached, I'm just going to take and clip them off flush. So that's got that off and it's not quite flush. So I'm going to take this number 17 X-Acto knife blade. So it's a nice chisel blade and I'm going to put the beveled side down and then just carve that off flush with the top of the roof like this. If you get these carved off flush, you won't have to do any filling with any type of putty or anything like that. You just get it off nice and flush there with the top of the roof. Okay, with those cut off and uh, nice and flush, I want to go ahead and make holes for mounting the M5 and the firecracker. And these are basically centered across the door opening. So you got your doorway here and the horn would have been here and here. And they were pretty much centered on the window. So a little bit further apart than the original horns. So I'm just going to put one right here. And I think this is about a number 53 drill bit. I'm not sure. I've been using it for years and years now, but it still works fairly well as you can see. Got that one done and I'm going to put the firecracker over here. Now on different models and different railroads they place these in different locations and they might have used a firecracker antenna on your railroad but they were very very common. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put these in and once all this is done I'm going to just put a, uh, take out my airbrush and spray the roof to cover all of these little details that are not painted. So I've got that ready. Now let me go ahead. I've got my M5 ready to go. So get a little super glue on it and push it down in here. On this I've got the three chimes facing forward, two facing to the rear. So you can see that goes in there and it covers up the holes that I left there before. So once I spray this with one coat it's going to cover it up completely. Okay, let me go ahead and we'll get the little firecracker antenna here and we'll get that installed here. There we go. Okay, so now we've got the horn, the firecracker antenna up here on the roof. We've got all of the lift rings installed up here on the roof. So let's go ahead and work on a different area. What I want to start with on the rear here is the MU hose cluster and uh, its support. I've already pre-drilled a hole on either side here of the uh, rear door and so this will go right in here. So let me put a little bit of super glue on the mounting nib here. There we go. I'll try to get this to where I can see what I'm doing and you can see what I'm doing too. So there's a little nib and I just put that right in place and we'll hold it a second for the super glue to grab. Okay, so you can see that one's there. And let me do this one on this side next. And it's going to go right on this side. Just feel around till it pops into that little mounting hole. Okay, so now we've got the two MU hose clusters back here on the rear. And these are a soft metal, so you can bend them to any shape you want. Now as long as we're working here on the rear of the locomotive, I want to add a set of diaphragms here to the area around the rear door. And for that I'm just going to use these inexpensive ones uh, made by Walther's. They have been making these for decades and they're just some folded uh, heavy material. And it's a 933-429. And I'll put a list of all of these detailed part numbers in the description so you can go look that up later. So let me dig these out and I'll show you how these work. As I said, these are just a piece of folded heavy paper, coated paper, that gives the appearance of the diaphragms on the rear of the locomotive, passenger car, whatever you want to use. These have been around, like I said, for decades. Plus they provide you with this nice little plastic striker plate that goes on the outside, just like on 
a real locomotive or passenger car. So all you have to do is take the folded diaphragm and glue it right here to the rear of the locomotive around the door on the diaphragm mount and then put the plastic piece on or you can put the plastic piece on first before you go to that. I've got one of my little uh, micro brushes so I'm just going to apply a light bead of super glue here around the door opening. Okay, that's all the way. I'm going to have to uh, rotate this around so I can see what I'm doing. And I'll come back in a second after I've mounted this because it's got to go right on here perfectly. So there it is over the door opening. Now I want to add the striker plate. And this is important because as you can see it's, it's a nice shiny plastic. And that means when you've got two of these butting up against one another, they're going to slide back and forth. They're not going to catch on one another. And that can happen with some types of diaphragms. So I'm going to go ahead and add a, uh, a, a layer of super glue on here. And then we can attach the striker plate. Okay, I'm going to put this in place now. Okay, I'm going to hold that firmly in place while that super glue is drying. Okay, so now we've got a diaphragm and I did all the gluing on the inside here so that there wouldn't be anything on the outside of the model. Okay, so that gives you the folded diaphragm uh, effect. Looks like a rubberized diaphragm on the prototype. So what else do I want to add today? So what this is, it's a, a another train line airline and I'm going to put this right here on the pilot and I've already drilled a hole for it right there so it's going to fit right in here and then be fit against the bottom of the pilot so let me go ahead and glue that in place and then we'll go ahead and move it down into position okay so I've got my little hole here the little uh, detail has a mounting bracket right here so I'm going to put just a little super glue on it and move it down into position like this and I'm going to hold that there until that super glue sets up okay that's done that then I'm going to bring the air hose down here underneath of the coupler opening so that's going to sit right there. So that adds a nice little detailed touch to the locomotive and it's low enough and flush enough so that it's not going to get in the way of the coupler operation. I've gotten my little teeny tiny paintbrush here. This is a 5.0 and I'm just going to do the lift rings. I've already done a couple so let's do here just like this just to give them a little coat of paint. Now I'm going to go ahead and give a little bit of paint to touch up on my horn. Touch up this horn just a touch because it was already pre-painted. And let's see, let's do the firecracker antenna. And I need to put just a touch of paint on these places where I remove the air horn. And once these are weathered, you won't even know they were there. Okay, so that's got the roof done. And the next, I need to switch to black paint so I can work on the other areas. Okay, next I've got some engine black to work here on the pilot, so let's add a little bit of black paint to the, uh, to the train line hose, the airline hose that I added earlier. And by the way, these are Badger AccuFlex paints that I'm using. You can order those through your Walther's dealer. Okay, so that pretty well takes care of that guy. So now we can turn back to the rear. Okay, now I'm going to work here on the rear and we'll finish off these MU air hoses. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to work over on this side now. Get this one done. Okay. Now, as I said, some people will come back and hit these little metal connections on the ends of the MU hoses with a little bit of silver paint. Personally, every one that I ever saw, they were so gunked up with grease and oil and the like from road uh, grime that you couldn't see that they were silver at all, unless they were brand new, I guess. Okay, one final detail on the chassis itself. Right here on the uh, locomotive truck, I want to add the speedometer. So let's go ahead. I've already pre-drilled that uh, hole right here. I think it was, let's see, they say a number 58 drill bit right here. So I went ahead and drilled it. And now let's add a touch of super glue here to the end of this. And I've already pre-cut this. There. Now, let's see if I can get it in here without dropping it, okay. So it goes right on the outside of that journal box. Okay, I'm gonna hold that in place until it sets up. And since it's a soft metal casting, it's going to take a nice shape, uh, a very natural shape, and all along the truck here. And then if I can get to it, I'll pull that up, add a drop of super glue to the underside of this cable, and attach it to the side of the uh, frame there. Now I'm going to let that super glue set up and then we'll come back and paint it. Okay, now that the super glue has set up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, paint this black. And later on, when I weather this, it's practically disappeared now with all that black on black. But later on, with the weathering, I'll make it pop back out. Okay, so that's the uh, speed recorder there. Let's move on. There's one little final detail I want to add before we wrap it up. Now, one of the nice things about these cabs, you can see we've got a nice cab interior with seats for a crew. So let's see what we can do with our crew here. The little guys that I have here are BLI crewmen. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of super glue to their butts and we'll put them in place. So we'll let this little guy sit over here. And we've got another one and pop him in place. Okay. So that gives us a crew to go inside of our locomotive cab. So let me pop this back together, put the shell on, and we'll take a look. Okay, and there we have the finished model with the M5 horns, the firecracker antenna, the lift rings that we added. Up here, the train line air hose underneath of the coupler. And on the rear, I've added the diaphragm and the MU hoses. So, nice little bit of detailing. It only takes a few minutes. Uh, it took me about an hour to film this all together, uh, but I had pre-drilled all the holes, so that made it a lot easier. I sat around watching TV the other night and drilled all the holes for this, so it was just a matter of popping things in place and gluing them down. And if you look real close, you can see our crew inside the cab there. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. You know, adding a small handful of details like I just showed you can really add a lot to a model, make it look a lot more like the prototype running on your model railroad. So go ahead, get on to walthers.com and look up the details that you want to use or go to the Details West and the Bowser websites and take a look at their selection of details. See what you want to add, get out your tools and get started. Because it don't, you know, this is the kind of thing you can knock off in one evening, really. While you're sitting around watching the TV, you can drill a bunch of holes and pop a bunch of details in place. So give it a try this weekend. In the meantime, have a great one, and I'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.